Happy Sunday evening. What a beautiful, beautiful day today. It, uh, I was amazed at how warm it was. My goodness, it doesn't sound like it's supposed to be too nice the next couple of days, though. So I guess we'll, I guess we'll get get to uh, <laughs> have have some cold weather back. I don't think winter's gone yet. So turn off the little little tape there, and let me get the comments up here. Hi, everybody. How is everybody this evening? Yeah, so I've been working. I I haven't worked too hard today. I've been kind of. I had to do laundry and all that jazz, you know. But I um I worked on um the new that newer um home is where the haunt is. I've been working on that little pillow, uh, Kimber Bell pillow, and then um that's kind of what I did today. I haven't really done too much. That was kind of fun. I've been wanting to make that pillow and trying to get it done. So. How's everybody tonight? Hello. Oh boy, there's all kinds of few people here. Just a second, let me see if I can get my computer going over here. So I have to refresh the screen to see if I can find myself. Oh, there I am. Okay, just a second here. Now I can see everybody's names. Sometimes on, so remember on, on um, StreamYard, when you see the... Uh, post. If you go back to it later, at the top of the video post each time, there's a little thing you can go click on and it will allow StreamYard to see your name. So if you haven't done that, go back to So Along With Jan, like after class, where the video is and just click on that little link and then tell it it's okay. Then I can see your names because I can't, all it says is Facebook user so it's nice to be able to see people's names. Like I can see Jan and Cindy and Pat, but a lot of people are just Facebook user. Okay. So make sure that you do that after class and then I can see your names better. So that's what I'm doing right now is I'm looking at, um, I'm looking at people's names on the other, on the other computer. <laughs> I've got my tablet up so that I can look at other people's names. So, okay. So I wanted to show you too what we're going to be doing in the next couple of weeks. Um, next week we'll have a software class. So we're going to do um, we're going to talk about the font editor um, in Perfect Embroidery Pro. It's really neat because um, I I've purchased like fonts over the years, and you know they're um, a they're a, a PES file, and then you just have to bring in each letter individually. To make your words okay so um pep actually has a um a font editor where you can what they call map the fonts and make them into a keyboard font so then you can use your keyboard on your computer to type it so we're going to talk about that next week that on um on uh, the the class next week will be on the software then so and then the next two weeks will be the april bench buddies so we're going to do this little bench buddy. This is the first one. We're going to do bunny kisses and Easter wishes. We're going to learn how to do prairie points. If you have never done prairie points before, we're going to do some prairie points. These are kind of fun. Okay. And then the um, next week, we're going to do the little bunny. So here's the bunny. I got it all done. I put a picture of it up on the, on the, on the group. And then this is the chenille. Okay, so we'll learn how to do chenille. And then uh, a lot of people have asked me about the little the little flowers. I just bought these little flowers. They, they tell you to make some sort of a little flower with like a clover loom or something. I just bought the little flowers. I thought they were cute. I got these at Walmart, these little, those little ribbon flower roses. So I thought they were cute. Okay, so that's what we're going to be doing for the next three weeks. And I'm already working on April. So I know what we're going to do in April. We're going to have a couple weeks off in April, uh, either one or two weeks off in April, and we'll have one week off in March, okay, because of um, some family stuff going on. So, okay. All right. So tonight, though, we're going to make um, an origami bag. Now, you know, this was one of my very first classes I ever did 
for Shield Sewing Center, I think. <laughs> and it's been, you know, 15 plus years ago. Um, but these I did, everybody loved them. These are just such fun little bags I made. So if you don't have the instructions, if you go to Sew Along with Jan, the very first post is the Dropbox link. Click on the sewing embroidery link and it will take you and it says back quarter origami bag. It's just a PDF file. And these are the instructions. Okay, so I had them written out for you and with some pictures. Okay, so go download that and print it off. It's real easy to do these so you won't have any trouble. Somebody was making these around Christmas time um, on one of the groups and I hadn't made any for so long. I thought, oh, I got to make some of those and we'll do we'll do those on so along with Jan. So, so here's one of my little bags. This one was kind of cute. Had little polka dots on it and polka dots on the inside so tonight i got another really cute fabric so but these are so fun and easy to make and they make nice little wrapping bags or i always keep like i keep stuff in them i have a couple of them that i use for like um oh like feet one of them i have i use for all of my um when i make my what do i want to say the um the jelly roll you know the jelly roll rugs i like to keep all my feet in there and, you know, some of my extra scissors and stuff like that. So I use them for all kinds of little stuff and they're just so nice. Okay. Super, super simple to make. So that's what we're going to work on tonight. Okay. So we're just going to do some sewing tonight. So hopefully I can see, see everybody's, whoops, second here. My video just disappeared over here. So just a second, I got to get it back. <laughs> Something happened. Where did it go? Okay. My video just, oh. It says I'm still going. Can you guys still hear me? Yep. Oh, there it is. Okay. I found it. Never mind. We're good. <laughs> the internet's working much, much better now. So <laughs> I'm, I'm doing better. Okay. So here is the instructions. I'm going to quick and flip my camera down here. So give me a second. Go down to the sewing machine. So we're just going to be doing sewing tonight. We're not going to we're not going to embroider tonight. We're going to just sew. Get my microphone turned down here. Okay, so you should be able to see my machine. And um, so again, if you have not gotten these instructions, you can go get these instructions by going to Sew Along with Jan. Okay, and everybody's still hearing me okay? Send me some thumbs ups if you're hearing me all right. I just switched over the microphone and everything. Um, you go to Sew Along with Jan, and the very first post on the group is the Dropbox link, and it's the Sewing Embroidery link. Cool, Get, getting thumbs ups. Um, and then it's a PDF file called Fat Quarter Origami Bag. Okay, and you can go, um, you can go download this, and then you'll have some written instructions as well. So what you need to start out with, it's sim simple stuff that you need. You need two fat quarters, okay? Two matching or not matching, but, you know, coordinating fat quarters. And then, um, so I had this really cute little fat quarter with the little cars, the little 50s cars on it. And, you know, some, some checker for the other side. I thought that was awful cute. And you're going, and then you need a yard and a half of ribbon, you know, like quarter inch or this is three eighths inch ribbon, I think. Okay, so I got, and then what I do is I get a yard and a half, and then I just fold, I just uh, cut it in half. So now I've got two handles, okay? So a yard and a half, cut it in half, and then your thread. And I'm going to use some, um, isn't, that, isn't that a cute fabric? I just, I got these, I think I got these down at um, the Hickory Stick down in Hannibal, Missouri. They had them on the clearance rack, and I just thought they were so cute. There was a whole bunch of different ones with the little uh, 50s cars on it. So I just thought they were cute. And this is a perfect project for them. So, okay. So then what I did, let me get these out of the way here. Then what I did is I took my fat quarters and I made two 18 inch squares, one from each fat quarter. Okay. So I've got these pre-cut already. I think you can handle, you know, doing your, doing your squares. And um, so you're going to make them 18 by 18. 
You can make these like any size you want. So like if you want a, a lot bigger bag, you can make a bigger, you know, square. Um, this is just makes a nice size little bag. And it's a nice little shopping or not shopping, but like wrapping bag for small gifts and stuff like that. And then they can keep the bag and use the bag. So, okay. So then I, so I cut my fat quarters 18 inches square. Okay. Then I'm going to take my, my, whoops, I can hear, I think I unthreaded my needle with my fat quarters. I have um, white thread. I'm just going to use white thread on mine. This is the Pima cotton thread that I like. Um, you could use cotton, you could use a, um, you could use a polyester thread too. I just happen to um, have this on my machine. So that's what I'm going to use. Okay. Now these are not really directional fabrics. So it doesn't matter. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put my fabrics right sides together. That's the first thing I'm going to do. Get my pins out here. We're going to put these right sides together. I didn't do any pre-sewing tonight. I figured we could just sew this up. They don't take very long. And they're so much fun. And, um, you know, try to keep your, your fat quarters very even. Um, mine, I think I did okay with mine. I'm not the best cutter. So we're going to stitch these all the way. We're going to stitch all the way around. So I'm just going to put a couple pins in each side just to keep things lined up for me. And in the corners. But I haven't made these for so long. It was, it, they're so much fun. Hi, everybody. Are you using quilting cotton? Could fleece or other type be used? Um, I am using co quilting cotton. Fleece might would be awfully stretchy, Shannon. I would, I would say a, you want to use a non-stretchy fabric for these because otherwise the, they're going to really, they're going to stretch a lot. So I would say a woven fabric would, would be better for these bags. You could do them on a lot of different things. I've even seen people make these little bags out of like, you know, nylon, you know, that they're waterproof. You know that kind of thing so you could do that but i would say a woven would be better okay so we're gonna just put some pins in here and then we're gonna leave um an opening and i think on the instructions i said leave about a three to four inch opening for turning so we're gonna leave just a little spot in the center here three four inches long oh yeah the denim denim would work good yeah, it's a little, it's a little thick, it's a little thicker. So what you might do if you're going to do denim is try to make it a lightweight denim, and then you might want to make it a little bit bigger. Okay, so I'm just going to make kind of a space in the center here where I'm going to start and stop and just leave a little opening. Okay. All right, and then turn, we're going to go ahead and we're going to sew a quarter inch seam all the way around and leave that little opening around the outside. Okay. So that's pretty easy. So we're going to get our th whoop, thread untied here. My goodness, I'm having a thread issue here. Okay. I am going to use then the quilt. I, I like to use the um, piecing stitch on my machine. And it's um, Q02 on my machine. And for those of you who have like just the sewing machines, uh, the brother sewing machines, if you don't have one of the embroidery machines or the touch screens, um, you'll all have these the same tabs um, for the brothers and the baby locks. But um, the other ones also have a piecing stitch and it has the letter P on it. And it looks like the, the, the needles kind of to the right. Okay. That's the one you want because that's going to give you a quarter inch seam. I have mine set at 2.5 for the length. Okay. And this is, and then I'm using my J foot because it says right here on my screen, if you can see, it says to use the J foot. Okay. I'm not a big, uh, I don't use um, piecing feet too often. In fact, we're going to be um, on Shields Live on Wednesday afternoon at two o'clock on the Shield Sewing Center um, Facebook page. We're going to do, <laughs> I, I titled it In Search of the Perfect Quarter Inch Seam because I have a lot of questions about quarter inch seams. And so we're going to actually talk about a bunch of different ways to make quarter inch seams on Wednesday. Okay. We're just going to do use, use a sewing machine then. All right. So I am going to go ahead. I'm going to, and when you use the J foot with the stitch Q02, I'm going to run the edge of my fabric to get my quarter inch right along the edge of my J foot. 
Okay. So I am going to actually um, tie this off here. I'm going to do a back stitch, which I don't always do, but I want to make sure that that where that that uh, there'll be a little stress there when we go to turn it right side out. So, okay. So we're going to turn around. And if you notice, did you notice that my foot goes up? I've got my I've got my pivot feature on. Really like that. So we're going to go around. Then then you don't have to touch a bunch of buttons to get to get uh, around the corners. All right, we're going to go around the side. And I do so pretty fast. Sorry, guys. You know, if that hopefully it's not jumping the camera around too much, but I do so pretty fast. Try to keep your seams as accurate as possible. It'll make your bag nice and square when you go to work with it. And I'll put, show you a couple little tricks. I always have a little trouble getting these folded. So I'll show you a little trick on with my, um, I use a cutting mat. And it's not going to work quite as well tonight because I don't have a cutting mat that lays on my table. So I had to kind of turn my regular one here, but it will work. Okay. So we're going around. This is next one. That we're getting close to the end here. Let's see. I think we're on the we're on the last side. Nope, not yet. We got to go around the corner again. Yet. The corners here. I thought this was cute fabric, though. I can't remember the other ones. The other, there was more cars with this one, but there was a whole bunch of different colors. There was blacks and whites, and this pink, and I think there might have been a blue with some cars on it. Do you know if the Brother Paysetter has the pivot? Um, which one do you have, Shannon? They all say Paysetter. <laughs> which which machine? Which number is it? They all they all have. Um, say a lot of them say Paysetter, but there are some that do not have the pivot feature. If you can give me the model number, I'll tell you. All right, and then we're going to go, whoops, we're going to go around the corner, and then we're going to stop so that we can have that opening. So I'm about ready to get to this opening here. And then we're going to back up. I'm going to do a little tacking stitch there for that stress. Okay. Get the, all these pins out of here. I, I love my little um, pin cushion. It's magnetic, so I can just kind of go like this and pick all the pins up. At the same time, we're going to cut and we're all, oh, the PS500. No, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm sorry. The PS500 does not have a pivot feature. You would have to go up to the 1350. It's a couple steps up to get the pivot. The pivot feature is a really, really cool thing. Um, I use it for piecing a lot. And then the other thing that that 1350 has that she's asking about some sewing machines, that one also has... Um, where is the pivot feature or the pivot button again? Oh, okay, Marsha, it's right here. So on most of the machines with the touch screens, it is right down here. Whoops, I'm not quite low enough. It's right here, kind of like below where the stitches are. It's right here, and it looks like a foot with a with a needle down through it. I just leave mine on all the time. Okay. So I just leave it on all the time. And it is really awesome, especially when you're working with um when you're working with piecing because then I can chain piece and I don't have to touch a lot of buttons. Okay. So step number two was place the squares right sides together and sew around the edge using a quarter inch seam. Leave a three or four inch opening for turning. So now we're going to do the turn. So we're going to turn the square right side out. Got to get my little tool out here. I've got to get it out. Okay. So this is my grandma's little trick. I'm going to take my first finger into the corners. I don't like, do not trim your corners because if you do, for, for sure, you'll go through them. I'm going to bring my seam allowance down to the seam and I'm going to push it up to the seam and I'm going to create a corner, hang onto it with my thumb and put it right and turn it right side out and it's going to be a perfect corner. And we'll fix those a little bit more even yet once we get around the corner here. So we're going to do the same thing. I've got my first finger ready on my right hand. I'm left-handed, so I probably do this backwards from you. Okay, I'm going to pull this down to the seam allowance. I'm going to push it 
into the seam allowance. So I'm going to hold the corner because I've already created my corner. I'm going to hold it and I'm going to turn it right side out. And we get these beautiful corners without trimming those corners out. Because if you do, you I will guarantee you, you will go through them. Because I do every time I trim them. Okay, so now I'm getting a little more of this fabric out of here. I got to find another corner. Should have a couple more to do here. Okay, so do the same thing. Okay, so I've got my, my first finger up in the corner. I'm going to pull it down. I'm going to push it in. And you can do this with heavy fabrics too, because it actually really, um, it works well even with heavier fabrics. I do this all the time with different projects, um, like even Kimberbell projects that I'm using batting and stuff in it. Because it works real well. Okay, I'm going to go down here. So then I then you don't have to trim through those corners because I always go through them. All right, so I'm pushing this one out. All right, got it. Oh my gosh, isn't that cute? I love the pink. There we go. So now I'm going to take my Floriani um, corner turn, my turner, my, my perfect, what do they call it? The precision turning tool is what they call it. I'm going to take that. I got to find the hole there. Where the heck did you go? Oh my gosh, I lost it. There we go. <laughs> it's over here. So I'm just going to finish off just to make sure that it is where I want it. Oh, somebody said they got here. Oh, Diane got here late. Hi, Diane. Okay. And just, just finish off the tip. But you've already created the, the corners. And then that way your corners turn out beautiful and very, very straight. Okay, so there's that one. All right. So I have that. I've got showed you my precision turning tool. This is that Floriani. And these are on the Shield Sewing Center website. If you don't have one of these, I have several of them. These are awesome. Okay. Then it says, we're going to trim, we're going to do, um, I'm going to take this over to the ironing board, but I'm going to show you what I do to, to start this. When I, I, I want this to be very flat with, my, the iron now. So what I like to do though, is I like to lay it in front of me and finger press the seam in before I go to the iron. Cause then I know I, that's going to be pretty, pretty nicely creased already. So I'm just going to lay it here. I'm going to pull this back and go along that seam with my fingernail all the way around because that way you get a really, really nice press on it instead of just trying to do this all with the iron. Okay. So I'm going to go around to each side here. I'm just going to pull this back. And then we're going to go ahead and I'm going to run over to the iron real quick and press this in. Okay. Because we want this nice and flat. And then you're also going to want to press in those, those little raw edges, you know, that we had those little raw edges. And we're going to do some top stitching next. So like here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to get this started. So I know these are kind of started here. My little places where I, the little place where I turned it, the opening, and just kind of get my quarter inch kind of started with my fingers. And then I, then I can, then I'll know that's going to match up nicely. And you want this to look nice and straight because it will show. Okay, we're going to turn it over. Do the other side. So I'm going to at least get it started. And then I'm going to run over here to the iron and get this all flattened out nice for you. All right. All right. So now we're ready to iron. Got this one good. Let's see if I got this one a little bit better. But I always kind of lay this down flat and make sure that I've got it kind of started and then it lays nice and flat all the way around. Okay. All right, so I'll be right back. I'm going to go do a little ironing over here. It's hard for me to show you my ironing table because it's, I don't have enough room for a camera over here. All right. Get this nice and flat. Take your time with the ironing. Ironing is very important when you sew. 
I spend a lot of time ironing. I don't, I don't like to iron my clothes, but boy, do I iron when I sew. That's one thing grand, my grandmother also was, she took lots of time ironing. Make sure everything laid very flat. That little bit of extra time makes a huge difference in the, out, in the outcome. All right, I'm just about done. I got kind of a wrinkle in the center here, so give me a second. That's a little bit better. I like to try to get the wrinkles out because when you go to put this together, if it's all wrinkly, then it it stays wrinkly because it's hard to iron it when it's all sewn together. So try to get the wrinkles out if you got wrinkles. It looks pretty good. All right. So here is my start of my bag. Okay. It was a beautiful day today. Yeah, it was beautiful here in, in Anamosa, too. We went for a ride in the car today and went down through the park and had ice cream and everything. It was great. Okay, so now what we're going to do is I'm going to make sure I've got this looking very nice, that little opening there. And I always pin that because I want to make sure that I I catch it well when I go to top stitch. So we're going to do some top stitching. I am going to just put a couple pins in here. I'm going to find the end of it though. There it is. So we're going to, that's where my opening is. And I've got this ironed down so it's nice and flat. So I shouldn't need to put any pins anywhere else. Sometimes I do, but I always like to pin that opening so I know exactly where it's at. I'm not quite happy with this one little spot yet. See if I can get there's a little spot that's just not down. There we go. Okay, there we go. So there's my opening. Okay, got my. I think I got most of the wrinkles out. There's still a couple in here, but they're not bad. Okay, so there's my, and then here's the other side. All right, what kind of pins? Okay, these are wonderful pins. These are the um magic pins they're called magic pins and they're the patchwork extra fine i love these pins they are super sharp if you have trouble with pins not being sharp i love these pins because they are sharp however they do make me bleed so they work really great all right so we're ready to start we're going to do some top stitching so we're going to top stitch about an eighth of an inch from the edge here Top stitch close to the edge, about an eighth of an inch, all the way around to make a nice finished edge and enclose the casing, so that opening, or enclose the opening there, okay? What kind of pins? Oh, what? Where can you get them, Rebecca? They are in the store, and they're on the website, shieldsewingcenter.com, and they're called Magic Pins. I just love them. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I like to start where that opening is so i'm i'm going to sew right there but i need to put my needle in the center first so since i'm on my my quilting tab i'm going to go back to q01 which is a straight stitch in the center i still have my length set at 2.5 okay and on the foot so i'll bring this back down when i top stitch there's two little lines on the j foot there's a line way over to the right. I don't know if you can see them too well. And there's one in the center. So what I normally do when I top stitch, if, if you run the fabric along the right-hand side little notch and have your needle in the center, that's approximately an eighth of an inch. It's a great top stitch. And there's still a little bit of the foot out here that will um, catch and feed the edge. Because that's the, always hard, the hardest when you go to top stitch is getting it to feed. Because you're not on the feed dogs you know, you're not, there's no fat, the fabric's not part, is only partially on the feed dog. So this works pretty well. So that's what we're going to do. I'm going to run the fabric along the outside notch on my foot, on my J foot. 
And all the J feet have this on it. So if you have a sewing machine, if you had to have a inverted machine, they're all the same type of foot. The uh, shorter feet on the older machines have that too. So, okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna start where that opening is. So I know I'm gonna catch it and I'm gonna top stitch all the way around this thing. Try right, to keep it as straight as you can. Top stitching is not my thing. I'm not very good at it. So sometimes my top stitching is a little crooked. But... All right. Love that pivot. See how that kind of comes up and I can stop and grab those pins off. All right. So I'm going to top stitch around. Watching my line. Okay, and this is where it's always, could you also use your laser on your Lumi for help with the top stitching? Yes, you could. Um, honestly, that is the, e the easiest way for me to top stitch is with that, that little hash mark. The, the laser light to me, it's harder for me to, to stay straight with it. So I, I do use my laser light for other things, but not for top stitching. I like that little, that little mark on the foot because it's something I can focus on better than I can focus on the light. So yes, the laser light would work very well if you're accustomed to using it. I have a little harder time staying straight because you have to focus on, you have to focus on the line and depending on how long your line is, it depends on where you're focusing. So that's why I like this little teeny tiny line for the top stitching because it's very short and I can focus on a very, very precise spot. Hope that makes sense. I get a little distracted by the light sometimes. <laughs> okay, so we're going to go around the corner here. Now this is where it's a little hard to get it started. Sometimes it wants to veer off just a little bit. Take a couple short, slow stitches. There you go. Top stitching has always been difficult because it is, you're not, like I said, your fabric is not all on the feed dogs. So it doesn't feed as well when you're doing that little narrow seam. Okay, so I'm getting up to the corner. Right, and that Lynn says, yeah, the spot is stationary in the late, and the laser doesn't actually move, Lynn, because it is stationary, but it's longer, and um, I get distracted by the light because it, it, I have to focus on a longer thing. <laughs> you on the on the luminaire, you can actually make your laser light different lengths, so I make it short, and that helps me. But I still find that I work better by using, I, I learned to sew without a laser light and I use it all the time when I'm doing like corners and stuff. But when I do this kind of stuff, this, this is easier for me with that little notch because I know that's going to give me a nice seam. All right, so I'm getting up to the last corner here. This corner, this, this, I had one corner that didn't turn out quite as straight. <laughs> Somebody says that bad eyes don't help. That is true. I, I don't have my glasses on tonight either. This is pink. You notice I pick light colors when I sew usually. <laughs> so I can see what I'm doing. If I'm doing dark colors, it's hard. Okay. We're getting around here. I'm a little crooked on my on my top stitching, so you guys will have to forgive me. I noticed that my top stitching is not perfectly straight. All right. This is really going to be crooked, guys, so don't mind me. Okay, it's, and I'm gonna knot this off, and this is totally not straight, so don't look at it. <laughs> I have a hard time top. I've always found top stitching very difficult. So this is really, and I'll I'll try to make that inside so you won't see it. <laughs> okay, so I'm just gonna trim some of these little strings off of here. All right, let's get rid of some more of these pins over here. All right. So here is my top stitch. Now, see, I like I said, I got a little, got a little crooked over here. Okay, 
That is your girl. Oh, somebody says they like to, to top stitch. I just am not good at it. I've never been very good at it. Okay. So then I've got this stop, top stitch all the way around. So that way. Oh, readjust. Yeah, sometimes I do too. I'm actually a better judge of distance now than I used to be as I've gotten, as I've done, you know, sewn more years, I'm a lot better at distance judgment now, but okay. So we're all the way around. We got it all top stitched. Okay. So that's holding those two pieces of fabric nicely together. Okay. So the next step is going to be the origami part. Okay. We're going to fold the square in thirds and pin on the folds as shown below. So this picture is a little bit on the vague side. So I'm going to show you how I normally do this. Give me a second here. I'm going to move a couple things. And then I'm going to move the camera over here. So we can you can see my cutting mat. So let me get, move this camera over a few inches so you can see. I'm going to put this over towards the cutting mat here. So what I do when I go to fold these is I like to fold these on a cutting mat. And then I have a little bit more, um, move that back out of the way. Okay. Then I have a little bit, I have some, some straight lines to help me. Because um, <laughs> I sometimes don't fold very straight either. So. Okay, so we're going to take this. Now, depending on how you fold this, what is going to be on the outside, okay? So, like, I think I want the little cars on the outside. So I'm actually going to sew, I'm going to, I'm going to flip this over and I'm going to put the checker on the inside. So whatever you want on the inside is going to be up, okay? Because we're going to fold this like this. And then we're going to go like this and sew it together. And then this is going to be the outside. Okay. So the main, most of mine is going to be pink on the outside. Okay. But what I like to do, and you can do it either way. But what I like to do is take, take my fabric. I'm going to see if you can kind of see most of this. Hold this up a little bit. I like to lay the points of the fabric. And this works better on my longer mat. But this is. I had to turn it sideways to have get it to lay here. So I have it laying on the number 29 line on both sides. Okay. Okay. So I my I put the two points here, this point and this point on the number 29 line. So then I know that I've got it, I've got it straight on my on my mat. And then these two pieces here you know it's about 24 inches so these are going to be about eight inches okay so they're going to be folded up about eight inches and then the other thing i like to do is i like to i don't know if you can see it very well up here but i like to put the tip the center tip on a line also up here so that i know i'm folding it pretty straight and i can't really see the the the, the tip here but i know i'm pretty straight by a line down here okay so what i'm going to do is i'm going to see if i'm about eight inches here let's see get my ruler and i'm just going to kind of measure and that's about eight inches up right from here so I'm, I'm trying to keep it straight so i've got it you know pretty straight with this one and then i'm going to fold this one down and make sure that that tip goes down here so see this tip i left it on this line where this tip is okay and then I can tell if I'm pretty straight by looking at the line down here. And I think I'm pretty good as long as mine didn't move too much. But that's the way I kind of make sure that I've got it folded straight. <laughs> folded straight is I just use my mat to help me. And that looks pretty good. Okay. And I can tell that the tip's like right up here. And this tip is right down here. All right. And this one's probably going to measure about eight inches as well. So we'll just measure it. Oops, kind of turned it this way. There we go. Yep, about eight inches. So there, you're going to have three eight-inch pieces like that. So that's always helped me to, to keep it straight is to, to, to fold it on a mat. All right. Then 
like this. So then what I'm gonna do is I'm going to, um, I'm gonna go put some pins in here and I'm gonna, whoops, gotta find my pins here. I'm gonna put some pins in here and I'm going to find that center piece. There's my center. Remember, I was on this line right here. So that's about the center of it right there. So we'll put this pin on the center. Because we got to make a, we're going to box the bottoms of this. So we got to do a little bit of sewing and do some top stitching or some stitching down here. And I'm going to put a pin here. So this is the center mark right here. Okay. So I've got my little tips. I can feel the little tip in there. Okay. And then I like to put some more pins in the sides just so that holds them, kind of holds them together here for me. And then we'll do a couple pins down here. But I found that the, the, the grid on my mat really helped me get these folded straight because I used to just fold them and then I was always crook, way crooked on them and they wouldn't turn out nice and square. So this way really helps me, okay? So now what we have to do is we have to mark the center with a pin, which I did right here and here are the centers, okay? Then mark a line one inch on either side of the center using a fabric marker or a pencil and then sew these along these two lines. So I'm just gonna take my ruler and this is gonna be the bottom of our bag, okay? So here's my, my mark here. So I'm gonna go up an inch from those two pins and I'm gonna take my, my uh, pen here. I've got one of those purple ones. Don't use those blue ones because they don't come out very well. This is the purple one that comes out with the air. I'm just gonna mark along that side one inch from the center. Yep, one inch from the center. So I'm gonna mark this side as well. Do this side, like that. And that's gonna be the bottom of our bag. Okay, so we're gonna mark that. We're gonna go ahead and sew along those two lines. All right, so I'll move the camera back. Give me just a second here. Okay, any questions on the folding? Does that make sense? So I fold the bottom up and I try to keep everything lined up on a line, okay? And then I fold the, the top down and, and keep it all folded up on the same line. And then I know it's pretty straight. Then you can tell from here if it looks straight, okay? All right, so that really helps a lot by using your mat. It's been a while since I've taught this, so it, I, I had to make a couple of them in order to remember all my little tricks I did. <laughs> Cause I bet you it's been 10 years since I've taught one, made one of these. Okay, move this back. Okay. See the top of my machine, I guess. Turn this around, there we go. Okay, so now we're gonna sew and I've still got my needle in the center needle position. I'm gonna go ahead and just sew up those two lines I just drew. And this will be the bottom of our bag. I am going to drop my needle and tie off. Okay, and I'm going to just drive up those two lines. It's going to need a nice flat bottom. And I'll tie off at the other end. Oops, I think I missed. We're going to back up a stitch. There we go. I got over exuberant. Okay, I'll cut that off. Yeah, Jackie, we did, we did these a long time ago. I think this is one of the very first classes I ever taught for the store. And I did this with the kids and the adults because everybody loved these little bags. They're so much fun to do. And whoops, I can hear. I'm going to back up a little bit. There we go. I'm going to go along this one. These were fun. This was a fun class. Everybody enjoyed them. Easy to make, make nice gifts. Do you charge? Change the stitch length. No, I don't, Cindy. I'm using 2.5. 
I like I like a shorter stitch. It's not a really short stitch. Um, I did change the stitch length from the um, from the default because the default on Q01 and two is actually 2.0, which is really short. And I make tons of mistakes and have to rip. <laughs> so I don't like to have to rip out 2.0. All right. So there's our bag. Okay. So now it says we got our bottom here. Turn the page and see what it says. It says fold the bag in half the long way keeping the folds inside. So these folds are gonna go inside. This is the inside of the bag. So up the sides close to the edge. And when I say close to the edge, you wanna stay close to the edge. Don't do a quarter inch seam. It's gonna be basically a eighth inch seam. And it's gonna be, it's gonna be basically an eighth inch seam or a top stitch. You wanna stay real close to the edge. So I am gonna put some pins in here. So we're going to, I folded it in half. So I went this way. Okay. So I, put, I left the folds inside. So I'm going to fold it this way. So it's going to all be pink on the back. Okay. All right. Cause it's kind of a self lining business here. Okay. So we're going to, I'm going to put a pin here. Now, the other thing I'm going to do is see where the top stitch is right there. I'm going to stop right at that point. I'm not going to stitch all the way up. That's the other trick is that way it lays flatter when you go to um, do the last step, which is going to be the um, going, going, um, the making the casing. Okay. And I'm going to have to take apart my, my cabinet here also, so I can use the free arm. So you'll have to bear with me when I take that off. Okay. So I'm just going to put the Put the um, pins in there. And again, we're going to do this. The reason I'm pinning is we are going to do kind of a, you know, kind of a top stitch. It's not going to be a quarter inch seam. Okay, we'll get these lined up. And I'm going to put the pin like right where the top stitch is. I love this pink fabric. I like pink. I think I've got the other, I've got another one here too that I was, I thought I'd make up. I think it's um, French fabric. It's kind of cool. So I've got some other fabrics here too. Okay, just a second here. So when you get into the corners here, you just got to make sure you don't get all a big bunch in the bottom. And I am lining up the, the where we sewed those inch lines. I'm, I'm just kind of lining up those too. Okay. And then Another pin there. Okay, so I think we're ready to sew. Now, I like to sew from the bot. I mean, it doesn't really matter. They're both, it's a it's a little hard to get started either direction, but I know that I sewed um, the from the bottom the part of the time because it seemed to be a little easier to get started down there. Oh, where did I get this fabric? I got this fabric down at um in uh, uh, at the hickory stick down in Hannibal, Missouri. I know that's where I got it. They had it on the clearance table. <laughs> I just thought it was so cute and it had like a fat quarter bundle of it. All right. So either way, it is a little hard to get started. So I am going to sew this one from the top. What I'm going to do is I'm going to start right where that um, top stitching was, where right where this top stitching is, right here. You can see it. Okay, so I'm, that's where I'm going to start, just below that. And I'm going to take a couple of stitches forward. And I'm doing an eighth inch. I'm doing a top stitch. So it's like an eighth inch. I'm going to take a couple stitches forward. Then I'm going to back up because we want this to be strong here. So I'm going to back up to that point, And then I'm going to go back over it again. Okay, so I just, I did, a, I actually did a, a tack. And keep the, the seam small. hold of that pin. That's why I like the pivot because then I can get my hands in there to get the pins out when I'm pulling pins. Okay, so then we're going to go down here. I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to back up 
and put a little back tack on the end there. Okay. Get these pins out of the way. All right, so that looks pretty good. Okay. It's not very, not a very big seam. All right. Get rid of this thread down here. We'll do the other side. So this one, yeah, I think I think we'll be okay to just just do it from the top. It seemed to work okay. Again, I like to kind of start when I do these. I kind of like to start below that, just below that um, top stitch line, and then I'm going and I'm I'm running it on the eighth inch. I'm going to go down a couple stitches and then I'm going to back up because if you back up, you don't want to back up off the end. Okay, get this pin out of here. So I'm trying to keep it as close to the eighth inch as I can. Yeah, it's been so long since I've made these. These are so much fun. And they go really fast. As you get as you as you do more of them, you can get really fast at them. Alright, so we're getting down here to the end. Gonna back up a little bit, block the end. There we go. Get rid of my pins again here. All right. So what do you think? So there's that so far. And this will be the inside. So we got all the, these little pockets down in here. Can you see all the little pockets down in here? Okay. There's the inside. Okay. Now we need to box the bottoms. So I'm going to go ahead, just give me a second here. So when you box the bottoms, I think this one, it tells you, to, I can't remember how far up I have to go. I have to read. Oh, an inch. Okay. So let's get rid of the, some of these little strings here. Okay. So it's, I've still got it inside out and I'm going to lay. There's no like seam at the bottom. So you kind of need to feel where your seam is so you know where you're going to the tip of your box for your bottom. So I'm just going to kind of finger press a little seam in there so I can kind of feel it. I'm going to turn this right side out. And then you've got to make sure though in here that you got those little pieces flat. So you should be able to see the pink down at the bottom when you're in all the way inside. Okay. So I'm going to lay this down so I can kind of see where my press is. And you want to line this line up on that press that we just made. Okay, and it's going to be about an inch. So what's lucky is remember those lines that we put in? That's about an inch. Okay. Somebody said something. I think we did this the same time of year because I made some of out of the oriental print. And oh, for St. Patrick's fabrics. Okay. Yeah, because we I know I did this in, a, in the spring at one time. Okay. So remember we did this line and it was about an inch. So if we measure this, we should be able just to go right along that line. Oh, look at there. We did pretty well. All right, so I'm just going to box it like this. This is the seam allowances up. I'm going to leave my needle in the, in the, uh, I'm going to make sure I've got everything flat in there. Make sure everything's flat in there. I had a little trouble with one of the ones that I did. I got a, I got a little crease in my box bottom. So I think I got it. Okay. All right, so we're going to sew along that line. Then we don't have to measure. Isn't that awesome? So we're going to do that. I'm going to back up over the edge. I like to start kind of on the fabric and then back up over the edge and then go forward. And we'll do the same thing down here. Kind of go back off. Let's back tack it. Okay. All right, there's one box. Trim some of those little pieces off. Okay, and then I'm going to do the same thing over here. And again, when you're down inside here, make sure you can see the pink because that's the, the inside, that's the outside of the bag, also. So make sure everything lays nice and flat. Get your hand in there and then you bring it down. You see where the kind of see what feel where my finger press was to keep it straight. Looks pretty good. Sometimes I get a little off on these. We'll measure this, see if I did okay with this one. Looks pretty good. Lay this flat. 
Got this in a little cattywampus, I think. If you like my technical terms. All right, let's make sure. I don't think I can feel something kind of bunched up in there. This is where I always have to check because something it's real easy to get a bunch in there. There we go. I think I got it. Okay. So we're gonna sew across this one. I'm gonna start on the fabric and go in and then go back off the edge. Because if you start on the fabric, it it makes it move a lot better. I'm gonna go off the edge and back up on that side. Okay. So let's see how we did. Okay. This will form a flat bottom in the bag. Turn the bag right side out. So now we're ready to turn it right side out. I'm going to trim a couple of these little strings here. And I have a bunch of them inside. They're not going to show much. Okay. We'll turn this right side out. Oh, <laughs> the word cattywampus. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So there's... Okay, so see, I got a little off on this one. You can see my seam there. Okay, so that one I gotten a little bit off. You can see that little seam that I did. I might fix that later. This one looks better. Yeah, I did better job on this one, on this side. Okay, so there's my box bottoms. I have a friend that she would just tell me, it's just a bag, Jan. It's okay. <laughs> she says that about quilts too. It's just a quilt. Okay, so then we're ready to do, why don't you trim off the box corners? They, um, the reason I don't on these is because they're so short, Lynn, and I don't want to um, have all those raw edges inside. They're all, this way they're all completely inside and covered, and so I don't want those raw edges inside. Okay, so there's my bag so far. So what do you think? How are we doing? You think, you, think that's looking good that's the outside and then the next step is going to be we're going to fold this down and we're going to make a casing so if you give me just a second i'm going to have to do some surgery on my table here so i can use my free arm so i always have to move everything i tried not to get too much stuff up here <laughs> but i had to put this mat up here because <laughs> i knew i was going to have to do some surgery Okay, move my little tablet, and I'll slide this mat up. Okay, so this table, I don't know if you've, you've seen me do this or not, but this table is pretty awesome. And um, it has two inserts over here. So when I need to use my free arm, what I have to do is I just pull the inside insert out. Because my remember, normally my embroidery unit's over here, okay? And then... I like my, I love that mat. That's a Martelli mat, Cindy, best mat ever. And they are industrial-like, so they, they really don't wear out. I mean, and then they, and if they get bent, they go back to shape. Okay, so now I'm going to pull my box off. Okay, so then I can just leave this open for a little bit. And we're going to turn this down. So the reason I did not want to go all the way up over those is that when you go to turn this down to make your casing you want to get this to line up and if you go up over those edges it won't lay flat in the corners and then it gets all bunchy in the corners okay so you do want to get these to line up so we're going to take some pins oops things going to hit the floor here so let me put this down a little bit so you can see what i'm doing so we're going to get this lined up Put some pins in here. So we're going to make a one, I believe it's a one inch casing. Yeah, one inch casing. I always have to read. That's why I write it down so I don't have to re remember. Okay, so we're going to get these all lined up and put the pins in here so that we have this nice and lined up. And when you go to pull it, if it's not perfect, it's actually going to be fine because you won't really notice it. But I like to keep it as straight as I can get it. And we'll go to the side and do the same thing. We're going to flip this down. So, so everybody, everything should just kind of, you know, meet up here on the corners. Okay, do this side. 
got a little high on my seam on this side, so it's not meeting up quite as well. But you don't think you'll notice it once I show you how we're going to do this. Okay. Go in here. This is this is really cute fabric. I got the other one. I, I was going to use the other one, but I thought, oh, I like this one better. I just thought it was cute. Be a little good little traveling bag because it's traveling cars. Okay, so let's get this in here. Like that. So we're going to turn it around. And you, you, everything should basically line up, okay? <laughs> Mine's just a little bit off, but it is easy to get off because you're actually working kind of on the bias then. So it is a little easy to get it slightly off because sometimes I'll pull a little bit and then it gets off a little bit. Okay, so now the next step is going to be to sew our one inch um, casing in. And so what I'm going to do is there's a one inch marking on most of these machines, just so you know, if you have the needle in the center position, the, the most of them have needle positions on the, the, the front of the needle plate. And my one inch mark is right here. Okay, out here. And I'm going to put that fabric up there. I'm going to slip it over my free arm and I'm going to put it up to my one inch. And it doesn't really matter where you start. I'm just going to start kind of in the back. Well, let's start up here. We'll start kind of along the edge here. Okay. And I'm going to drop my needle. I'm going to tie a knot. And then we're going to sew one inch all the way around. So I'm keeping it on my one inch line that's over here. And if you need to, you can always, you know, use a piece of tape to help you with that one inch. But most of the Brother Baby Lock machines have this marking on the front of the needle plate. But the needle plate markings usually are for the center needle position. Oops. I tried to not put the pins in too far so I could just leave them in. But I that one was a little too long. Okay. So going around the corner here. And see, I'm sewing right over those holes. Because look, we have built-in slots to put our our, our uh, ribbon in. Don't even have to make slots; they just automatically become slots. It's pretty awesome. Right, so we're going around the corner here, keeping it at an inch, just about to the beginning. We'll see how we did this time if I can get it to line up better. Oh, looks like I did pretty well. All right, so hopefully everything will line up when I get to the end here. All right, I'm going to tie my knot. And do one more stitch and do, tie one more knot. There you go. Okay, and then I'm going to cut. And then we're going to trim a little bit. Take those pins out. Did pretty good keeping most of them out of the way. Trim a couple more little strings down here. All right, so there is our casing all the way around, okay? So now we're ready to put in our, our ribbons. And this has always been something that people struggle with, um, is putting ribbons in. So there's a couple different ways. Obviously, you can use a big, um, like, safety pin, okay? Um, or, you know, that's the old-fashioned way. We always just did the safety pin. The other way that I like to use is I actually have one of these bodkins. I don't know if you've ever seen one of these things. It's, it's like a long needle with a little with a little ball on the end. So it's not sharp. And it's a bodkin. And these work really well because this ribbon's fairly thin. And I can just put it through the eye of this needle. Just kind of fold it a little bit and it'll go in there, hopefully. Sometimes I can get it and sometimes I can't, depending on if I have my glasses on. There we go. Okay, so I'm just going to use my bodkin. Okay, so now when you go to put these in, now these are drawstrings. So we're going to put one ribbon in each direction. So I'm going to start on this side and I'm going to take my bodkin and we're going to go all the way around, all the way through. I kept going. I didn't come out the other side. I'm going to keep going and come back out the side where I started. Yep. And you don't want to pull your, don't pull your thread all, or the ribbon all the way through like that. So we're going to pull this in through like that. And I always like to tie this because if I don't, I pull it out. 
So I'm going to go ahead and tie this one. So see, this one's going to come. I went all the way around, and it's going to tie on the same side. Okay, so we're just going to tie an overhand knot in it like you're tying a balloon. Maybe if I can get them lined up here. Second. So I'm just going to tie an overhand knot in here so that they won't come out. Otherwise, I always pull them out. So just make a nice knot at the end. Okay. And now we want the uh, the next one, we want it to come out this side. So we're going to start. How long are the ribbons? So you in the instructions, it tells you to get a yard and a half. And I just I just um, cut that in half. So it's it's um, I don't know three three quarters of a yard. Does that sound right? <laughs> half of a half of a yard and a half is three quarters of a yard. So um, I just do a, a yard and a half a ribbon and cut it in half. Okay. So we're going to do the same thing with this one. So with my bodkin, the little eyes a little small. So if I just kind of fold it, kind of like an arrow, it goes through there better. Like that. Okay, and then I'm going to start on this side because we want the ties on this side yet. We're going to go all the way around just like we did before. Remember the first time I did this, I was like, wow, this is like so cool. The way these, I'd never made anything with a drawstring before. I was like, okay, so I'm coming out the same spot. We had all those nice built-in. Oh, tying a knot. Oh, tying a knot in my stitching. Somebody asked if tying a knot in my stitching. I'll show you that here in a second, Nance. Give me, let me tie this knot first, and then I'll show you. All right. So most of the sewing, uh, the sewing machines and embroidery machines have a, they have two ways of, you know, tacking. You can either do a back tack or you can do tie knot in place. Okay, so I'm gonna tie that overhand knot. Okay, so we got our, what would be cool with printed? Yes, it would. I just, you know, honestly, um, Shannon, the problem the problem is I, with, with me being at my dad's, I don't have all my ribbon here and this is just what I could find. <laughs> This is what I had here. So I had white. So yes, it would be very cute if it had print ribbons on it, but I didn't have any. <laughs> so now at this point, since you know one end comes out this way and one end comes out this way, when I go like this, look, it makes a drawstring. And awesome. And then look, see, there's the little pockets on the outside. So it makes the little pocket out here and it's the little blue check on the inside. And there's a little pocket on each side. And awesome. Like that. So there's little pockets on the outside and then, and then here's the inside and it's all pink inside. Isn't that cute? I just love making these. They turn out so cute. And then um, there, but they just make nice, you know, like if you wanted to give a little small gift to somebody and then they have the bag to, to use too. So it's not cute. Yeah. I just love that. Yeah. Two different colors of ribbon. You could do whatever you wanted with the ribbons. Yeah. That un unfortunately I just had white. That's all. <laughs> I had here, so I had to use what I had. <laughs> okay, so there's that. So, so Nance asked about the um, asked about the um, tie off. So, what I'm using most of the the newer machines now have um, the Brothers and Baby Locks have two buttons. They have a polka dot, and they have a this is the reverse. So that physically goes back. So, if you want a back tack that goes backwards, you use this one. And then this one just ties a knot in place. So like, let me just put my paper in here so you can see it. But um, it, when you just hold this button in, it goes up and down three times and ties a knot in place and then stops. So that's what I mean by tying a knot, okay? So I, I really like that feature. Um, if you have one of the older machines, so let me show you on the screen here. If you have one of the older machines, um, you had to choose the stitch according to what you wanted it to do. If you wanted it to go backwards, you had to, or if you wanted to tie a knot in place. Okay. So, um, if I go back to my normal tab, which is number one for the, for the sewing, you can see there's, there's two straight stitches on the left and two straight stitches in the center. Okay. So if you used the straight stitch with the two little lines up here, then it would go backwards physically, okay? If you use the straight stitch with the little polka dot, it would tie a knot in place with the reverse button, 
that's on the older machines because we didn't have this button on some of the older ones. So now, so you, this one would give you that tie off with just a polka dot. Okay. And we'll talk about that again some more time. Oh, I'll, somebody asked about the video. I will, uh, it'll be on the group here. It'll be on the group and then I'll put it up on YouTube in, a, in about an hour or so because I'm going to work. I'm going to have supper first. OK. All right. So I'll talk more about these buttons again. Um, that's something we might do on Shields Live, too, is explaining some of these buttons and how these work, because um, not all the machines, the newer machines have these, but the older ones didn't. So, OK, does that make sense? Because I, I use the I don't like to back up. Um, cause it does veer off anytime you start your feed dogs backwards, it kind of veers off just a little bit. And especially if I'm quilting, I don't like that. So I use this when it just stays in place and ties a knot. Okay. All right. So there is our little bag. What do you think? Isn't that darling? I just thought that was really fun. These, these are fun to make and what a fun little easy project. You can make a bunch of little Easter bags or you can make, how about May day bags? For May Day, you can make May Day bags and fill them with some candy and give them out. Easter, um, you can use them for Christmas. So you could you could make them out of make them anything, and they just turn out so cute and they're easy and fun to do. So, okay. So remember, next week is Software Week. We're going to do. Let me turn my camera up here real quick. So next week we're going to do um, we're going to do some software in PEP. We're going to talk about that. Um, Get my microphone turned on. We're going to talk about the um, font editor. So that's really fun. I'd never used it before. And the font editor is really fun. So we're going to do that next week. And then we're going to, um, the following week, we'll be, we'll go back to some bench buddies. We'll do the Easter bench buddies. So, okay. So I think dad's ready for supper. He's out in the kitchen making his supper. So I guess that's my cue that it's time for eating. <laughs> So everybody have a good night and I will put the video up on YouTube shortly and it's also going to be here on the group. So if you have any questions, you know, you email me, you message me through Facebook, call me at the store, whatever you'd like to do. And we'll see you next week. Thanks, everybody. Good night.